Hello, hello out there, and uh, welcome. Sorry about that brief delay. The, there was a minor technical glitch. I'm your host, Haxor91, and uh, tonight we're going to be playing some Quest for Glory 1. Uh, so you want to be a hero. Uh, give me one moment, please, while I just do a quick share to a few places here. So we might be able to get a viewer or two in. Okay, so sorry about that. And I will be updating uh, a few things with this stream a bit later, specifically when it comes to art and, and planning it more. Uh, it's been a bit of a long day, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, The software you are now using was produced through the efforts of many people. Designers, artists, programmers, musicians, and lots of other hard-working folks. If you make copies of the software for any reason other than to make personal backup, you're not only breaking the law, but raising the cost of software for all legitimate users. Please do not make illegal copies of this game. Oh, by the way, you'll need the information contained in the printed documentation to successfully complete this game. In other words, it's not just the law, it's a good idea. So, this is actually... Oh, hey Flint! Welcome! Uh, can you hear that? Hang on, I don't think you can. But let's fix this, because... Uh... How about that? Now, let's see, can, can we hear that? Uh, let me make a sound on the computer. There we go. Now you can hear that. Okay. So the only thing you missed was the Sierra intro. We'll manage. Uh, so a bit about this. This is the VGA remake of the 1989 Quest for Glory 1. Uh, this one was from 1991, I think. And uh, we're going to be playing through it. Uh, all five games with one character. Um, I am starting this game tonight because this is the beginning of spring. The Equinox was a few days ago. And when they originally designed this series, uh, Lori and Corey Cole, who are a husband-wife team, uh, designed there to originally be four games in the series. And each one of the games was supposed to correspond to... It, it's kind of a combination of a direction of the compass, a season, or one of the four classical elements, water, fire, earth, air. Um, they then, in the middle of making the games, realized they needed to add in another one. So there's actually five Quest for Glory games. Um, but they sort of still are loosely tied to the various elements. Uh, this one is uh, spring, so with it being spring, we're going to play through. Um, I plan on playing through all of these uh, with the idea that we uh, do one for each season. Well, in the case of two and three, it's going to have to be both during the summer, but early and late summer for those two. So let's do the introduction. If I remember right, this is just credits, but... So, originally this was called Heroes Quest, but they had to change the name to Quest for Glory due to the board game Hero Quest. Um, there was talk of maybe legal issues. There, there never were in the end, so it was changed for not, but it was still a, a, a concern. Um, I've met the Coles before. They're very nice people. We got to hang out at PAX 2019. Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly, Flint. Uh, Hero Quest was, was still a fun game. 
Um, and I get why they called it Hero Quest originally, because or Heroes Quest, because all of the other Sierra games were like Space Quest, King's Quest, so Heroes Quest made sense, but the lawyers got nervous, and so they changed it. And some people are still salty over that change. Uh, I came to this series much later. I, I first played this game in my teens. And unfortunately, unlike they said at the very beginning of the video, um, I did uh, basically pirate most of the games originally. And I felt incredibly guilty about it for years uh, until I did stuff for the Coles where I basically created some animated backgrounds for their streams. Um, so we've got a choice of three classes, fighter, magic user, and thief. Um, there is a fourth class that is added, the paladin. Uh, but that's only, you, you can only achieve Paladin at the end of the second game. Um, and while I do want to do Paladin at some point, we're going to do that on a second playthrough. Uh, for now, we're just going to do Thief, and there's a reason for that. Excuse me. So, during character generation, we get 50 points to put into whatever. Uh, Thief is the only one where you can add points to every single skill. So we can uh, have a magic user that's, uh, or a thief that's a magic user. Plus, you can do all the cool thieving missions, which are really a lot of fun. And you get a lot more money that way. Um, I'm going to put a some extra points in luck and vitality because those are really important. Um, now the cool thing, like I said, is you can actually, uh, at the end of this game, you save the character and you import it into the next game. And you can do that through all five games. Uh, so hopefully this character will make it through all five. Um, I need a name for this character. Uh, do, do you have any suggestions, Flint? I'm open to ideas. Uh, I've traditionally done the name Albus, but I, I'm cool with other ideas if you've got them. Tasselhoff. Uh, where, where are we getting Tasselhoff from? Sorry, it's been a bit of a long day. I mean, yeah, we gotta stay on brand, but I'm not sure what brand we're referring to here. Oh, Dragonlance. I've I've not I, I don't know Dragonlance, so I I, I need to uh, get up on Oh, it's your brand. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Well, you know what? We're, we're doing something different tonight. We're going to do it uh, as uh, Tasselhoff. This seems like a quiet little town. On the porch ahead of you are two people. The standing one is large, rather ugly, and playing with a yo-yo. The seated person smoking a pipe looks like he might be the sheriff. I don't remember if it auto advances text. We're going to hold around to just find out because it'll be useful later. It's staying around, so maybe not. The man with the pipe greets you. Welcome to our town. You are lucky to have made it down from the mountains before the snow blocks the pass again. It's gotten pretty dangerous outside of town, I understand. Many monsters have been trapped around here with the late snow. Between them and the brigands, we certainly could use a hero around here. I am Sheriff Schultz Meiterson. This is Otto von Goon, my assistant. Good luck on your quest. 
So the first thing, we want to talk to everybody because if you notice, A, it gets us a point. And B, we can find out a lot about things. Um, so in Quest for Glory, you, you don't just talk to people and like Space Quest, it would just kind of advance automatically. Um, it actually gives you topics to talk about, which is kind of nice. So the mountain first. You should know. You came down from there. The town. This town was named after the barons of Spielberg. It used to be a lively place to be before the brigands came down and drove all the business away. You can find a place to stay in the inn next door. You can learn about jobs available at the guild hall down the street. If you are interested in magic, you should visit the magic shop. There's still plenty to do and see here in Spielberg. Uh, the Baron. Baron Stefan keeps mostly to himself at his castle north of here. We haven't seen him here in town for years. Magic. Just next to the inn is a small magic shop. The owner, Zah, will let you in if you have some abilities in that area. She's a strange one, all right. The inn. Go talk to the innkeeper. He will, he will help you there. The guild hall. The guild hall is the southwest corner of town. If you're looking for work, that's a good place to go. Uh, tell me about monsters. The monsters come down from the mountains every winter, but they're usually gone by now. The Baron just doesn't have enough men to handle them. Wolfgang is the one to talk about the monsters. He's had a lot of experience with them. Wolfgang. Wolfgang down at the guild hall is the one to talk about the monsters. He's had a lot of experience with them. The guild hall. The guild hall is at the southwest corner of town. Okay, okay, this is just a repeat. Um, the brigands. There's a whole band of brigands hiding out somewhere in the mountains around us. They robbed a merchant just last week. Got a fair amount of treasure I hear. The merchant. The one who was robbed? He's staying at the inn, I believe. The inn. Go talk to the innkeeper. He'll help you there. Um, let's see. Treasure. Obtaining treasure involves putting yourself in danger. If you're brave, foolish, or lucky, you might just get some treasure. Danger. My friend, this world's filled with dangers. Sometimes I think that it might be better to choose your danger rather than sitting around waiting for it, as I think to do. But enough of this philosophical rambling. I am content enough to be Sheriff of Spielberg. Um, let's see. Adventure. You'll need to talk to the Baron about that. Or go off Wol ask Wolfgang down at the Guild Hall, which is just down the street. So maybe you're going to be a hero. Well, we could surely use one around here. What with all the brigands and whatnot. Uh, we've already talked about them. Name. Uh, it's just his name again. Let's talk to Goon. Nope. Okay. So, there's a couple of different things. First, let's turn up the detail. Because that's always useful. The detail just adds little extra animations in. Um, it was for slower computers originally. Um, so not only does this have the normal Sierra walk, sight, interact, speak, it's got two others. It's got this one, which is, um, our character, and we've got a couple of different things. We've got walk, run, sneak, rest, our character screen, and the time of day. And then this just kind of gets us out of it, or this, this tells us about it. Uh, so let's take a look at our character sheet. This is just basically what was at CareGen. Um, now, unlike D&D &D or other games like that, uh, you, you don't level up. You, there is no level one or two that your character is. Um, it's just your skills increase based on you using them. Uh, so the best way to get better at, say, weapon use is to fight. 
the best way to get more magic is to practice at it. So we'll do that in time. Um, let's go over this way and uh, let's go to the guild hall. Actually, let's talk to the old lady here. She's really sleeping soundly and doesn't notice your presence. You enter the Adventurer's Guild Hall. This Adventurer's Guild Hall reminds you of the one in your hometown. The traditional Moosehead and other stuffed monsters, Saurus, Troll, Griffin, Dragon, Cheetor, and the terrible Antwerp adorn the walls. You see a registration book on the table and the bulletin board full of job listings. The man seated near the window must be the guild master. He's snoring. Oh, I was trying to talk. I was trying to look. There we go. Even in death, this monster remains awesome. Uh, oh, hang on. Uh, the plaque reads, Dragon, slain by Baron Stefan von Spielberg. The head is like a panther's, but with a strong human-like quality. It's still rather frightening. The plaque reads, Cheetor, slain by Wolfgang Aventure. Um, this certainly is a weird one. You've never seen anything quite like it. The plaque reads, Antwerp, slain by two guys from Andromeda. <laughs> Space Quest reference. It looks like it must have been the particularly nasty troll. You wouldn't want to meet him in a dark forest. Eventually, we will meet one. The plaque reads, Troll slain by Wolfgang Abenteur. Uh, this crossbreed of eagle and lion could have torn a man apart when he was alive. The plaque reads, Griffin, slain by Wolfgang Aventure. Uh, so there are no griffins in this game. There is one in the next. The plaque under the moose says, courtesy of the Sierra Online Prop Department. Uh, a bunch of Sierra games had moose heads in them. Uh, Leisure Suit Larry has one in the original bar. Um... King's Quest has one somewhere, I forget where. It's in five or six, I think. Uh, you never saw a purple source before you came to Spielberg, but it looks like a really stupid monster. Um, uh, the plaque reads, Saurus, slain by Hans half -Witten. Let's read the book. This entry was made several years ago. It says, Baronet Bernard von Spielberg killed a troll near the Flying Falls on this 23rd day of October." Let's give it a sign. You sign your name into the adventure's logbook with a flourish. Oh, I forgot. We need to check the time of day. It's midday on day one. Okay. Reward for return of lost ring. Inquire at the healers. This poster is rather dusty and faded. The pictures of a small child with braids. Reward of 50 gold coins for the safe return of Elsa von Spielberg. Inquire at the Spielberg castle gates. Reward of 30 gold coins for the capture or death of the brigand warlock. Description. Short, ugly, and wears a brightly colored robes. His has a habit of laughing continually. Inquired Spielberg Castle Gates. Wanted. Brigand leader. Description. Description. Unknown appearance. Wears a cloak. Must provide proof of leader's identity. Reward of 60 gold coins and the title of Hero of the Realm. Inquire at Spielberg Castle Gates. Notice. Spell components needed. Cash or trade for potions. Inquire at the healers. This poster seems to have been here a while. It has a picture of a handsome but arrogant young man. Reward of 50 gold coins for information leading to the return of Baronet Bernard von Spielberg. Inquire at Spielberg Castle Gates. So let's go ahead and talk to the Guildmaster. The Guildmaster appears to be hard of hearing. Perhaps you should get closer. Uh, come on. Am I not close enough? Come on. It was just yesterday that I drew my sword and started out. Oh, is that the day before? 
No, then last week. Why? Wait, wait, what was I talking about? Um, this is where the advent an adventurer can find out who needs someone brave and courageous. There are many jobs on the bulletin board over there. It's a good place to talk about adventures on a cold afternoon. All right, I need to figure out other German accent uh, voices, or this is going to become really confusing and boring really quick. We used to play cards here once a week as well, but there are too few adventures in the Spielberg anymore. They all died from monsters or brigands, or they just got too old. Um, let's talk about the trophies. Schultz and I killed most of the monsters on those walls. Um, so, I, from what I can tell, I think that talking about all these things might be passing time, because it's already midday. Um, there's a lot of good info to get, and we'll do some of them, but I don't think we're going to talk about everything. We're going to skip the monsters, because I know enough about those. Um, the curse. Ja, with the bird losing his son and daughter, Baba Yaga, all the monsters and now the brigands, it's just been one thing after another. Um, Baba Yaga. She is at the center of our problems, I think. Baba Yaga is a powerful ogre. Bern von Spielberg tried to force her to leave this valley, but she cursed him. Now the Baron has lost everything but his land, and I don't know how long he will keep that. What our, what our valley really needs is a hero. A hero? A real hero is someone who didn't start out strong or powerful, but uses his courage and brains and skills to become the best he can be. Um, let's see here. I think we're, we're good for now. Um... I do hate to miss some of the dialogue because it is really good, but it's also really hard on the vocal cords. Um, let's see, how much gold do we have? We've got four gold and ten silver pieces, weighing point, uh, 0 0.2 pounds. And we do have a weight limit. Um, 20, we, we now have 24 pounds of equipment and supplies, um, and we can carry up to 45. Uh, that will go up over time, uh, but for now... That's all we can carry. Uh, let's hold off before we go to Zara's magic shop. Uh, I want to get a bit more money before we go there. Let's explore a bit more of the town, though. You can smell apples as you approach this corner. Good day, and welcome to Spielberg. Would you like to buy some of my nice, fresh fruits and vegetables? What's your name? I am Hilde, daughter of Heinrich Perfundrelen, the farmer. Um, farmer. My father is a fine farmer. A uh, farm. We have some land in the north of town. It isn't very big, but we grow many things. You should be here during the harvest time. Then you'd see many fruits and vegetables. Your mother. My mother has been dead for three years now. I still miss her. Um, let's see, vegetables? We have many kinds of fresh vegetables for sale today. There are carrots, rutabagas, parsnips, and potatoes right from the ground at five for a silver. They are very good for you. We also have some apples. All right, we're gonna buy some apples. Um, you carefully se select ten of the best apples from the barrel and pay, pl pay Hilda a silver piece. So we're actually going to buy five of them because they come in handy later on a quest. Uh, let's go into the dry goods shop and see what's here. This looks like a dry goods store but it smells like a musty library. The stove feels nice on such a crisp day. Behind the counter and on the shelves, there are a variety of items for sale. The shopkeeper appears to ignore you while he reads a book. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't notice you coming in. 
My, you look like an adventurer. We don't get to see, see too many of those around here. The brigands tend to get most rid of the mo, rid of most of the adventurers before they make it to town. I do try to stock some things adventurers can use. I actually would rather be an adventurer than a shopkeeper, you see. My items are pretty ordinary, though. You probably already have most of them, if you've done any adventuring at all. Well, let's see, what's your name? Why, that's me, Caspar. Um, adventurer. I always wanted to be an adventurer. I read about all of them all the time. The book I was just reading is about adventuring. The book. Oh, this book? It's about an adventurer who's trying to become a hero. The title is Quest for Glory, A Hero's Death. Well, that's kind of ominous. Um, equipment. Unfortunately, I've only standard weapons and equipment. I carry daggers and chain armor. Maybe someday I'll be able to carry magic ones, though. Um, let's see. Dagger. Ah! The use of the dagger is a most skillful art. Actually, this particular weapon is longer than most, but still easily concealable. A bargain at 20 silvers. And if I remember rightly, it's, um, 10 silvers to a gold. If I remember right. Um... Let's go ahead and see what we want to buy. We could buy a flask, some food, a dagger, or armor. We're not going to buy anything right now because we actually have everything we need. Um, we will come back and buy some daggers later, but not yet. Um, let's keep going. Um, okay, let's the, the baker. The shop seems to be closed. Although there are some dried up cupcakes in the window. There's a sign on the door which says, Gone Fishing. The shop seems to be closed. There's a sign on the door which says, Gone Fishing. That's for the butcher, that is. Let's go down this alley. This grubby place must be an alley. It feels strange here, colder than the rest of town. There's some barrels discarded here. A beggar holds out a bowl towards you. Alms? Alms for the poor? Thanks! You know, it's really tough trying to make a living begging in the town since the brigands started scaring all the trade away. Um, what's, what's your name? My name's Sam. I've lived here for five years now, and I think I'll be heading on once I, the, the pass clears of snow. There's supposed to be some good begging towns to the south. Nice talking to you. Alms for the poor. Alms. So Sam actually uh, shows up in one of the later Quest for Glories. So we actually really do want to help him out here. What's to the south? Heard Silmaria is a good place to be. It's by the sea. Think I'll head there after this. Uh, Silmaria is where Quest for Glory 5 takes place. And that's exactly where we meet him. Let's see, what else? Um, night. I remember when people used to stroll around town after dark. There's a spell on Spielberg so that it glows at night. Now the only people out late are the thieves. And out of town, man, you don't dare be out there without a light when the sun goes out down. The night gaunts will get you. Gaunts? Nobody ever lived to talk what the night gaunts are. I sure don't want to find out. Uh, thieves. I'm not usually bothered by them, since I don't have much to steal. They're around, though. It's not safe to sleep in the streets at night. Outside, you get eaten. Inside, you get robbed. Uh, the spell. I've heard talk that some kind of magic keeps things peaceful around here. Folks just don't feel like fighting in town. Except maybe Crusher. Kind of wonder about this alley at times, though. Feels funny. Sort of like the spell missed it. It's dark at night, too. About time I get back to work. Alms. Alms for the poor. Alms. A word of warning to you. Don't drink the dragon's breath. And that looks like a tavern. 
This building looks old, dark, and a little seedy. The sign above the door depicts a beer stein. The grimy window lets little light into this tavern. It smells like stale ale and other more unpleasant things. The floor is covered with dirt, and the bar is sticky with beer. The bartender glares at you as you enter, and so does the ugly goon on the left. You get the impression that you're not welcome. So, first things first, love the smoking dragon here. That's a mighty unusual keg there. Also, the baker and butcher were had gone fishing, and uh, the baker seems to be deeply involved in the game. They seem to be using old maid cards, but it looks like these guys aren't playing with a full deck. The butcher is wearing a blood-stained apron. He seems to be deeply involved in the game. So they're playing Go Fish, basically. Um, oh, there's a note there. You see a crumpled piece of paper under the stool. You pick up the note. You smooth out the paper, piece of paper and read, B, he's starting to get suspicious. Hold off on our meetings for a bit, but I'll keep you posted by these, last, by these notes. B. Let's have a seat. Yeah, what do you want? Um, let's see. Ale, sweat, or breath. So, we're going to buy nothing for just a moment, and we're going to save. Um, oh my goodness, we've not even saved yet. So, let's go ahead and try this breath, because I'm assuming that's the dragon's breath that we were warned by Sam not to have. <laughs> you want a drug of the dragon's breath? House rules say that we have to be cash up front. You cough up the cash. Thanks, buddy. Hey, Crusher! Our friend here wants the dragon's breath. There you go. You've never tasted anything like it before. Oh, wow. Talk about a fiery brew. Maybe you should, really shouldn't have tried the dragon's breath. Better luck next time, and we hope you saved your game. <laughs> Sorry, I just, I love that animation. It, it's cutesy. Um, what time is it now? It is midday still. Good. Okay. Let's go ahead and explore the land of Spielberg. There's a couple of things I'd li I like to do on the first day. Um, come on, this way. The breeze is cool, but you feel a shiver deeper than just the cold. You're really on your own now in a very dangerous place. The bright smell of fresh herbs mingles with the aroma of wood, uh, uh, wood smoke as you come up to a hut by the side of the road. You politely knock on the door. After a moment, you hear the inside bolt slide open. A voice from inside says, Come on in. The fragrances of herbs mingle with some rather unpleasant odors as you step into the healer's house. Lovely day, isn't it? My, you look very healthy for an adventurer. You must be new. What can I do for you? I can sell you healing potions if you like. I also buy spell components if you're interested in gathering some for me. Don't mind me. I always have so much to do around here. Uh, what about you? Well, my name is Amelia Appleberry, but I mostly am known just as the healer. I'll be happy to sell you some potions. I love here with my pet, Terry. Uh, your pet. 
Oh, that's my pet Terry, the petasaur. Ah, he's a girlfriend, Patressa, with a nest in the oak outside my door. Terry keeps me company and listens while I chatter as I work. Uh, Petrosaur. They're a species of flying lizard. I understand they can grow quite large in the south. Uh, the ring. My ring is shaped like a gold in a braid of the herbs of Athalas with entwined leaves. I don't know how I lost it. I hardly ever take it off. So, um, couple of things. Uh, that's the ring that we read about on the board in the Adventurers Guild. And Athalas is used in Lord of the Rings. Um, King's Foil. Reward. I'll give you six golds to the person who returns my ring. It was a gift when I graduated from the College of Helen. Um, let's see here. Spell components. I always need ingredients for making potions. Right now, I need some of Arana's flowers. Magic mushrooms, troll beard, and let me think. Oh, oh yes, cheetor claws. I'll be happy to pay you for, if you bring me some. I'll also buy back any empty flasks you have so that I can recycle them. Waste not, want not, after all. Um, flowers. I use flowers from Irana's piece to the north in nearly all of my potions. They have some of the magic of the place, even when they're dried. I will pay you five silvers for a flask full of flowers. Arana's Peace. Almost due north of here is the meadow called Arana's Peace. It's a very magical area, and I understand that it is a place of safety. It's, a beautiful, it's beautiful all year, for the flowers are always in bloom. Um, let's see. Uh, ooh, Mandrake Root. Mandrake Root is used in a variety of spells, mostly for evil purposes. Mandrake must be pulled from a dead man's grave at midnight. The root is particularly powerful. Um, let's see. That'll do for now. Um, let's, let's head out for now. Oh, by the way, if you happen to find a ring on your adventures... I lost my favorite gold ring. I'll give you a reward to the one who returns it. So, if you notice here, the lovely little bird out here, there's a little gold. It sometimes glints. And there's a couple of ways to get the ring, because that's where it's hiding. Uh, we can try to climb the tree. It takes a lot of skill and practice to climb this tree. Um, or you can use the magic spell Fetch, which we don't have yet, because we don't have any spells. We have the ability to use magic, but we just don't have any spells yet. Um. Who are you? My name is Carl! Um, the castle. This is the castle of Baron Stefan von Spielberg. Let's go on in. Um. Just a minute, I'll raise the gate. And I'd like to point out that the gate cannot possibly exist because of the portcullis rises through the what would be the top. Um, if you're addressing me, sir, you must respect me enough to address me to my face. Uh, oh, you're the weapon master. I am the weapon master, expert swordman and trainer. Um, practice? Practice is a way to refine and improve one's skills. So, basically, we can train with him later. Uh, we're not going to right now, but we'll come back and do that later. Uh, we need to head over here, because a couple of reasons. But mainly this one. You looking for some work? Yeah. Good. Come in here and take a rake. Mucking out the stables. It's honest work. I don't pay you to rest! Get to work now! Oh, 
Okay, come on over here. The stableman hands you some coins and says, Now you're five silvers richer. So, there's a couple of reasons to do that. One is the money. But also, if we look at our character sheet, our strength has gone up uh, our, and our vitality has gone up. Uh, the intelligence went up for talking to people and learning about the area. And our climbing went up from trying to climb that tree. A couple of other things to note. Um, due to our vitality going up, so our health um, maximum has gone up and so has our stamina. Uh, we do lose stamina from doing the mucking of the stables and from climbing the tree. Um, so we do have to be very careful. Uh, if you run out of stamina, you die. Uh, come on. There we go. So, a few things. We definitely want to try and get that ring. So let's climb a bit more. And I'm not reading that a million times because it's just going to say it takes a lot of practice to climb this tree. Uh, I do want to check on our stamina. It will warn us when we're getting low. But as you can see, our climbing is going up. Ah, there we go, finally. And so we're just going to kind of shuffle on over. And Oh, shit. Ow. Remember what happened to Humpty Dumpty. That's what happens sometimes when you go out on a limb. But, um, uh, excuse me. So doing that, we certainly uh, got hurt. But our stats went up, including agility and, uh, We've got some more vitality, but we are a bit hurt. Uh, what time is it still? Sunset approaches on day one. Okay, so... Uh, we're going to try this one more time. Okay. And, and just because you've done it once does not mean that you've got the skill to, to climb it again. Um, it is still random number generated um it just your probability goes up the higher the, the skill and we're getting kind of tired here um oh the other thing that we should always do when we're outside of the town is sneak sneak is another really useful skill that we can't have enough of um we're gonna actually rest here for about an hour after 60 minutes rest you feel better so it's now nighttime. Um, before we leave, we're going to practice our lock picking skill uh, on the healer's hut. Your lock picking skill will do you no good here. The door is barred from the inside. True, it's not no good, but it does raise our lock picking skill, um, which is very important if we want to actually get into somewhere later in the game. And we're just going to do this on repeat. Uh, we can't get into the healer's hut, which is fine, but it continues to raise our skill. Uh, so we're going to be thankful for that. Um, where are we at now? 29. Okay, we're, we're going to come back later uh, at another night. We need to go into town, but the gate's closed. Uh, we can still, however, try to climb the wall. Climbing the wall proves too difficult for your current level of skill, but keep practicing. After making sure nobody's watching, you make your way into the town. Uh, so, first things first, we're going to go to the inn. One of my favorite characters. Welcome, welcome, traveler, to the Hero's Tale Inn. 
I am Shamin, at your service. May you find what you seek here. Very good food, very good drink, finest in town. Sit, rest, you will be served by my Shima. You take a seat at the table nearest the fire. Oh, it is indeed sad and dangerous times we live in when a man who struggles daily to keep from starving should be robbed of all of his earthly possessions. I am Shima. Allow me to serve you, wanderer from afar. Do you wish for food or drink? Um, let's talk to the merchant first briefly. Uh, actually, you know what? I have a better idea. Let's buy him a meal. Buy Abdullah a meal. Gladly will I allow you to buy me a meal, O prince among heroes. Shima, prepare for me the feast of six Aoris. I am willing to wait. Your kindness overwhelms me. I can tell you will someday be a great hero. Now, you will have a secret. Among the items they stole from me was a magic rug. I alone know the words to command it. If you help recover my treasure, I will take you, Shamin and Shima, back to our land by the way of the flying carpet. Shapir needs powerful heroes too. And also, I'm gonna buy myself a meal. You pay Shima for a meal. And let's talk to Abdullah a bit. Uh, I am Abdullah Du, son of Ali, grandson of Hassan, and former master merchant of Shapir. Now I am but a penniless burden upon my friends. The robbery. Two weeks ago, I was going to be wealthy beyond what you could dream of. I, Abdullah Du, would be the first merchant into this valley this year. But my life was shattered by brigands. The brigands. The band of brigands would ambushed us just as we crossed the pass into the valley. There were about twelve brigands, including a huge minotaur. There was also a leader and some sort of wizard. They first used some sort of magic with, which binded us. Then they overwhelmed my six guards and my assistants. All my trade goods from before me were taken before me. I am now but a beggar. Living off the generosity of my friends. Um, tell me about the magic. The wizard threw something at us that caused my eyes to be blinded with tears and my nose to be forced to sneeze. I was helpless. The Minotaur. The Minotaur is a creature with the head of a bull and the body of a man. They are said to be very strong. The leader. The leader? was wearing a cloak so I couldn't see his face. His voice was rather high-pitched, though. I bring you that which you ordered. May it please and satisfy you. So, one of my favorite bits about this series is the food. The food tastes surprisingly good, and the drink is delicious. Um, they often give quite the descriptions of the food. Uh, for some reason, they didn't this time. Permit me to clear the table for you. Uh, but it's to the point where the fans want to do a cookbook. Um, I've actually made some of the uh, one of the meals from one of the games. I forget which one. It was like stuffed dates with honey and... Oh, it was delicious. Tell me about the wizard. The wizard was very short and he giggled most of the time. I couldn't understand what he was saying. Uh, the guards. Here I pay good money for, for men to protect me. And what do they do when I need protection? They run away! Not one man died to defend my treasure. You just can't hire good guards anymore. 
Um, the wealth. I had treasures carefully brought from Shapir with me. I even had a magic carpet with me. So Shapir is the setting of the next game. Um, so th this just kind of shows you that they, they had basically the whole series planned from the beginning, uh, which is part of why this series works so well. They did add in a game midway through, but it fits in quite nicely, and as you'll see why uh, as it unfolds. Um, tell me about your friends. Even though they too lost a fortune when the brigands stole from me, Shamin and Shima are caring for this frail shadow of a great man. Shima, tell me about Shima. Oh, hey, Clavis, no. She is of the finest cooks outside of myself, that is. But her fine food is a dust in my mouth, for I am but a beggar. Tell me about Shamin. He is the very prince of Katas. And tell me about Shapir. Ah, Shapir, beautiful land of golden sands and shining sun, the heart of civilization. Alas, she is plagued with fierce jinn and the freets who seek to drive all men and cut us from the land. But I can speak no more of the homeland I shall never see again. Instead, I will die in this cold forsaken land bereft of all I love. Yes, welcome, Clavis. Uh, let's see. Tell me about the merchant. I trade the treasures of the one land for that of another, but the brigands have stolen every treasure I had, and I am a merchant no more. Um, all right, that's it. I'm going to get up, and uh, I think we're going to stay here for the night. Uh, what time is it? Night's still young. Uh, I'm trying to think. I think I've got enough time. But let's go ahead and save uh, night one. Because uh, uh, Shamin does lock up after a while. Let's go ahead and sneak a bit. And I don't... Actually... Mm, yeah, my pick locks is only at 29. I don't know if that's going to be high enough for what I want to do. Um, oh, there's a pulsing light coming from the alley, though. Let's take a look. Ooh. A shiny coin. This place seems sinister at night. Some strange object is glowing at the other end of the alley. Let's grab it. Corn light spell gets them every time. See that dagger? The next one's centered at your back. Give Sneak there your cash, and you walk out of here. It's a simple trade. Your life for your money. Um, I'm a fellow thief too, friend. You mean that the first victim we've had in months is a thief? Here I thought we finally gonna make some money. Tell Crusher the password is Schweiderfish. He's in the tavern. Now, go before I forget you made the sign and make you pay anyway. Yeah, we're getting out of here. Come on. So, we learned the... Uh, the password. So, let's go ahead and talk here to Crusher. Um... The goon seems to be ignoring you. Uh, Thieves Guild. What's the password? Uh, Schweiderfish. The dark, seedy place is less than you'd expected for a Thieves Guild. You feel uneasy about the sinister mood here. The man seated by the table greets you with a scowl. Crusher is his usual, amiable self, and you can't quite make out what lurks behind that massive door. Beginners! Why do they keep giving me beginners? I tell you, Crusher, 
that thief of my stature, that a thief of my stature and abilities should be stuck in a podunk town besieged by brigands who aren't even union members is the height of injustice. It'll cost you 25 silvers to work in town. Just pay Boris at the door. If you don't have the cash, go steal some. All right. Boris. Let's uh, buy. How much do I have? Four gold, two silver. Okay. Um, let's see here. Let's buy our license. Welcome to the Thieves Guild Union. Local 1313. And I'd love a toolkit, but I don't think we have enough. I'm sorry, but you don't seem to have enough silver. Come back when you qualify. All right, so we can at least legally, uh, as it were, thief, uh, thieve things in, in town. Um, we have a couple of nights to, to do the thieving uh, before... I think it's other thieves or the, the sheriff catches on that there's somebody. Um, but I'd like to have a higher lockpick skill, to be perfectly honest. And I'd like to have the proper uh, toolkit because the lockpick by itself, yeah, you can do it, but the probability of you failing and then getting caught goes up quite a bit. So we're just gonna hold off for now and I think we're gonna go to bed. So we're gonna go back to the, the uh, Hero's Tale Inn and we're gonna pay Shamin for a night's rest. May you dream of the rewards you deserve. You thank Shamin and pay him five silvers for the room. The sleep heals and refreshes you. I think we can get breakfast here as well. You take a seat at the table nearest the fire. I am Shima. Allow me to serve you, wanderer from afar. Do you wish for food or drink? Um, let's do a meal. Oh, there's no need. You're not hungry. Okay. Okay, so let's take a look here. Uh, so, resting, we did not get all of our health back. Uh, that's one of the things... Uh, there's only one place in the game where you can sleep and regain all of your health in one night. Um, and we'll make our way there. We'll, we'll go there soon enough. Uh, it is by far the best place to go. Um, the only thing that went up since the last time we checked was our stealth. Let, let's head out of town. We've got a lot of things we can do. Um, we're going to skip mucking out the stables. Yeah, it does raise our strength and uh, give us a couple of coins, but um, we've got better things to do with our time. Um, it, it's still early morning, so l l let's start heading out and finding some things to fight. <clears throat> ah. The center stops his raking. Uh, let's see the name. I am Heinrich Preferendern. I live in town with my daughter Hilda, who sells produce on Market Street. So, yeah, basically, this guy farms all day. Um, so, here we are in the woods of Spielberg. Um, we're going to save... So, there's a couple of things we can do. Uh, I'm going to first sneak. Uh, one, it'll raise our stealth skill. And two, there's a good chance that we will not be attacked by monsters. Uh, two, there's actually a... I'm not sure if it's a bug or if it's intentional or not in this version of the game. 
Oh, that's a brigand right there. Um, but it often there's a palette color change when uh, an enemy is nearby. I'm running away from the brigand. I'm not strong enough to fight him. I need like a goblin right now. So we're going to head on back to our centaur friend. Once we reach here, th there are certain spaces where you are safe, as it were. Oh, a Saurus. Another one I'm not quite ready to fight yet. We're just not having much luck. So, um, looks like they don't have this issue in Scum VM, but the screen used to flash around the borders uh, slightly. Uh, as the color palette changed due to the enemy. Um, if you notice, there's a lot of color palette changing in this game, especially for a good example is like the change from day to night uh, is where, when they do like the color palette change. And it's fantastic. It, it works really well, but it can cause some other bugs. Um, Or in, in the case of that, it can work to our advantage. Okay, so this is the goblin training ground. There is always going to be a goblin that pops out to attack. And after each time you return to the screen, there is going to be um, more goblins to fight you. Uh, so a goblin steps out of the bush. The goblin has a mean look in its eyes. You prepare for battle. So, the way that the combat works is you've got to try and stab these creatures when they're in the right position. Um, and there's a certain, like, frame of animation that they'll be on. Wow! You threw that dot dead goblin a long way. And let's loot it. You find five silvers concealed in a pouch. You take the silvers. Um... And our weapon use went up, and our strength and vitality. So we actually gained some some stuff, which is good. Um, but we need to get more money badly. And there's actually um, a good way to get more money in this game. And it's due to a bug. And the bug is here on this screen. Uh, this is the fairy circle. Oops, crap. Let's take a look. It's a ring formed of large and rather unusual looking mushrooms. Uh, so this fairy circle of mushrooms, you pick a handful of the smaller mushrooms and carefully put them away in your backpack. Uh, basically, you want to fill up as many as you can. Let, let's check our weight limit here because we can't exceed it. 40 pounds out of 49. Um, yeah, exactly, Flint. Uh, I am very much the hacksaw when, when it comes to this. Um, so this bug is, it's a weird one. It was, it was present in the original game, the, the, the EGA version. And because they basically just ported it to the new version of SCI engine and reskinned it, um, it's still present. And basically, it allows you to sell an unlimited amount of mushrooms to the healer. Uh, she'll say that she is not buying anymore, but she still buys them. And you still get the money for it. And you can repeat this as many times as you like. Um, and we're just going to gather as many as we can. We're at 47... Forty-eight, and one more. Yeah, forty-nine out of forty-nine. Okay, so that's all we're going to take, because any more and we'll be encumbered, and that causes issues. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of shrooms to get. Um, and mind you, there are other ways to make money. Combat's a good way to do it, but... Uh, Things are really expensive in this game, and uh, I like not having to worry about money. Uh, wouldn't this be so nice and easy to do in real life? It's a pity we can't. Okay, 
So this screen is a rather unique one. Um, it is just south of town, because you can see the walls here. And there's a lovely bull, uh, it's a practice target. Um, this screen will come in handy later when we work on our throwing. For now, we're just using it to go around and get back to the healers. Um, I know that all of these woods look very confusing and very similar. That is the idea, but there is actually a map, and I do know where I'm at. Um, yep, here we are back at the gate. What are our stats looking at? Okay, stealth at 44. Um, it's about this time where we'll start to dodge enemies. Oh, we never got the ring. That's right. I never grabbed the ring out of the, 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 the nest. Let's try again. There we go. And let's try and get this ring without falling on our face this time, please. You carefully bend down and reach into the nest. In the nest, you find a gold ring. You take the ring and move carefully back along the limb. You're carrying so much that you can hardly move. You'd better drop something soon. So we're over our weight limit now, and basically it burns uh, stamina by moving now. Made it! Now back down the tree. <laughs> yeah, no, we sort of are like Dora in that regard. Um, we don't actually have a physical map in this game. Uh, you, I just know the way around. You politely knock on the door. After a moment, you hear the inside bolt slide open. A voice inside says, Come on in. All right. Well, what can I do for you this time? All right, let's unload a bit. Here's... Uh, oh, let's give her the ring last, because we actually leave the hut when, when we give her the ring. These are very nice. I'll dry them and grind them into a powder. You're no longer overloaded. That's a load off your mind. They're very nice. Blah, blah, blah. Thank you, but I have enough mushrooms. But, like, as much as she says that, we are still getting money for this. So, <laughs> We're now out of mushrooms, and we now have 24 gold <laughs> and 14 silver pieces. Um, now let's give her the ring. Uh, oh, thank you for finding my ring. How I've missed this. Here are six gold and two healing potions for your reward. You put the reward away and tell her she's welcome as you leave to avoid being kissed again. All right, cool. We actually have some money now. Uh, so the first thing we're gonna do is head on over to the magic shop. Um, Cause I'm itching for a few spells and they really do come in handy later. Um, like a lot of the CR games, there's a couple of ways to solve various puzzles. Um, like I said earlier, getting the ring, you can either uh, climb the tree or you can use the fetch spell. I want to say there's also a way to knock it out of the nest if you, like, throw a rock at it, but I could be wrong on that one. I am Zara, and my companion is Damiano. The items in this shop are designed for those skilled in the use of magic. I am both human and fairy folk. I draw my power from both. My name is Zara. This is my shop. Uh, the fairy folk. We are a people of power and magic and live in the forests far beyond the mountains to the west. Power. Power is the essence of magic, that which the wizard shapes and is shaped by. Uh, Damiano. Damiano is both my familiar and my friend. We share our lives and our magic. 
familiar. A familia is a creature of magical abilities which has been summoned to serve the wizard. The summoning of a familia is a most powerful spell and can be cast but once. It binds the wizard and the familia to the ends of their lives. The more powerful the wizard, the more powerful the familia, although you cannot always judge power by a familia's shape. Magic. If you have the skill of magic, you can learn the way to cast spells by reading magical scrolls. Without the skill, you have no power. The more you practice spell casting, the greater you shall become. Um, initiation. When you have mastered nine spells, have the power to cast all, and proven yourself worthy of a, by accomplishing a great deed, then you must undergo the initiation to become a full wizard. There is a place in the distant south where you must journey, but first you must become a hero here. That's foreshadowing to the next game. Um, wizard. A wizard is one who both shapes magic and is shaped by it. Erasmus and I are the only wizards in the valley. Erasmus. Erasmus is a wizard and a spellcaster who knows much about this area. He lives in a tower northeast of town at the top of a steep mountain called Zaruberg, or Zauberberg. He can be very helpful if approached properly, but he has a strange sense of humor. Um, power potion. The potion, the power potion restores your magical energy and costs 75 silver. Journey. There are many entrances to the halls of magical mastery in the south. After you have gained skill and a good reputation in magic, you should journey south. If you are indeed worthy of becoming a wizard, you will find a way to those halls. Um, hero. Master the arts arcane. Use those skills to vanquish the evil curse and you will become a true hero. Um, Spielberg. There is much magic in this world for those who know how to use it. There is magic in this little town and a good deal of magic in this valley. Uh, tell me about the town. There is an aura protecting this town from danger. Within most of its walls, there can be no acts of violence or cruel magic. Even so, it is prudent to avoid dark places, as we found last night. Aura. An aura is a spell of protection surrounding something. The town is still protected by the aura cast by the great spellcaster Irana. Um, Irana. Irana was a powerful spellcaster who lived long ago. She brought peace to this valley. Even now, her spell protects this town from violence or foul magic. Her final resting place is due north of town, and it is a place of both safety and healing. It is known as Irana's Peace. Um, tell me about the valley. There is much power in this valley, and it attracts those who use magic. I am here. Erasmus has his house on Zahu Zauberberg, and even Baba Yaga has her hut cooped up somewhere around here. Uh, tell me about Baba Yaga. She is a powerful and witched hag. You should be wise to avoid her. She cursed the Baron von Spielberg when he tried to drive her away. The hut. Baba Yaga's hut is magical. It stands on chicken legs and you must know the rhyme to enter. What's the rhyme? I have no interest in entering Baba Yaga's hut, and therefore do not know the rhyme. Uh, tell me about the curse. This is Baba Yaga's curse cast upon the Baron years ago. 
Upon von Spielberg and all his clan, this the curse I now demand. What I will shall come full measure, so shall ye lose all that ye treasure. There's always a way to break a curse. Possibly Erasmus knows more about this. All right, let's see what you got for sale. Let's see. Ooh, the fetch spell, definitely. As you read the spell scroll, the spell is in ingrained in your mind. Let's do flame, which is all the same. Um, open. As you read the spell, let's see. Okay. So there's a healing potion for 50... The power potion for 75 and the vigor for 25. Uh, let's keep that in mind, the, those prices, 50, 75, and 25. And just like that, she's gone. What a dramatic bitch. Um, So I want to go back to the healer's hut because we need to get a few potions. Um, it's very wise to have some during this game. It's okay. Good. It's still mid morning. All right. Come on in. And if I remember rightly, they're they're um, the prices are quite different. Okay. So stamina here is twenty instead of the 25. Healing is 40 instead of 50, and mana is 60. Um, so we're going to buy a few. Uh, one of each, I think. Oh, come on, mana. And we want the undead unguent. Ah, crap. You find you have less money than you thought, and can't afford to buy a potion. To the mushroom circle! Um, so the undead unguent is... Uh, it's not a potion, it's an unguent, so you rub it all over yourself, and it protects you from the undead. Uh, we'll need it in order to not die later on in the game. Um, but we'll get to that in a bit. Oh, I suppose I should also do some sneaky here, because while I... Oh, oh good, a gabo. I don't mind fighting gobos at this point. Um, once we get a bit stronger and our weapon skill goes up, I will be willing to face uh, other things. Um, but right now, gobos are about what we can handle. You find four silver coins and carefully place them in your pouch. Um, okay, good. Um... Out of curiosity, how much money do we have? Six gold. Okay. Yeah, th those potions are very expensive. Um, and so are the spells that we got. So I will blast things with magic eventually. Just right now, we we don't have much magic. And I'm actually saving it for a bit later. Because we, we've got to use some magic for something else. Um... And the mushroom is right here. And out of curiosity, what is our weight capacity? 41 out of 50. So if you notice, our we can now hold 50 pounds when we can only hold 49 before. Um, as your strength increases, so does your carrying capacity. Uh, what are we up to now? So basically, um, whenever it's time to pick up mushrooms, I see how many pounds I have left. So in this case, I've got 48. So I'm willing to pick up two more times. Um, even though the mushrooms aren't one pound, they are still like half a pound or something. Oh, hang on. Deary, are you okay? Hang on. Chihuahua to take care of. You okay, darling? Good girl. Sorry, she had a reverse sneeze. Um, yep, that's exactly what it was. 
Um, yeah, so there's a way to solve that. If you cover one nostril, it'll it'll stop them. Um, the reason that I'm so paranoid over inverted sneezing is it's not good for dogs' hearts. In fact, um, our last Chihuahua, uh, Peter, died of a heart attack right after a reverse sneeze, like 30 seconds after one. Um, and it was actually in the room I'm in now. Uh, and I will never forget that. It was an awful experience. Uh, I'm just glad he didn't suffer long. Uh, but it, it was awful. It was right after inverted sneezing, and the vet even said that can be bad for their heart. And uh, so now I kind of panic whenever I hear my dogs do it. And uh, just just cover one nostril, and that, that will alleviate it pretty quickly. Uh, for those who don't know. Sorry about that minor bit of trauma dumping there. Uh, just always uh, just on my mind when that happens. Alright. Cool. We have sold mushrooms and now we have 24 gold. Um, so let's go ahead and give some of that gold back in order to buy some more potions. So the undead unguent. Uh, let's take another of each. I think that pretty much clears us out. Yeah, we're, we're down to two. So we've got three healing, two mana, one vigor, and one undead. I thought I bought another stamina. Okay, there we go. Now we've got two, right? Yeah, good. Um, and what is the time of day? Midday. So, let's go ahead and go on out, and I don't remember. I need to get my lock picking up. Oh, shit. No, we need to go back to get more mushrooms. Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly, Flint. I, I know exactly what you mean. Watching those shows does give you some knowledge. Um, man, the, the, the blacksmithing does sound cool. I wish I had the money to do that kind of thing, or... Or just even, you know, know somebody who does it that I could watch them or maybe try it a bit. If nothing else, it would make me buff. So, okay, we need to go back and do one more mushroom run uh, just so that I can afford that lockpick uh, set. Um, the, the, the proper thieves tools instead of just the bobby pin that I've got now. So we'll do one more load of mushrooms, and then I'm going to try to get my um, lock picking up a little bit more. And then we are going to do some thieving tonight. Okay. So one, two, three, four. And what are we at now? 48. Yeah, crap. Yeah, it, it, so, like, the thieving is, like, one of my favorite things in this game. Um, it, it, they, it... it adds a couple of, like, side quests that you can only do if you're a thief. And it gets you some money. Oh, here we go. A monster just wandered by. You hid in the bushes until it passed. So, by doing that, like, that, that's because our, our stealth is now at 61. Um, it'll help us avoid a lot of battles. Um, but no, the, it's just some cool extra shit, a side quest to do in this game. There's only two places you get to rob, but it's a lot of fun and it, it nets you some money. Uh, 
a fun little bit of trivia I learned while, while I was with Lori and Corey Cole was that they actually had a devoutly religious guy working on the original game at first, but he ended up refusing to work on the game because of the thief character, and he refused uh, because of his faith to have anything to do with the, the thief. So they transferred him to a different game. Um, they didn't say who it was, and not that it matters. Uh, the name is probably long forgotten to history. So who's this guy? What's in it for me? You give me a silver, I might have a bit of info you can use. All right. Let's see, one silver. For another silver, I can tell you about where to go find the Baron Baba Yaga, where some goblins who have a lot of treasure. Um, what's your name? Just call me Bruno. Uh, Baba Yaga. She's an ugly hag who lives in a weird house who knows some magic. Her place is due west of the Baron's place. Can't miss it. And for two gold, I'll tell you how to get into her hut. Uh, yeah, no, I, I, I'm good. Uh-oh, Fury, you okay, honey? All right. If you want a good time, try the dragon's breath at the bar. <laughs> so if he's told us to do dragon's breath, he's, he's not to be trusted. Um, he, he is an absolute villain. Um, and unfortunately, we don't get to, to kill him in this game. Um, we have to wait until the fifth game before we get a chance to kill him. Uh, so let's go ahead and sell them more mushrooms. Mushrooms! Like, ever since Lord of the Rings, that's the only way to say mushrooms, as far as I'm concerned. Well, that and, and potatoes, like, like, Lord of the Rings has ruined how I say certain vegetables. Okay, um, we now have, how much gold? Fifteen. Okay, not a great amount, but better than nothing. And it's midday. I don't remember, can I lock pick during the day? Okay, good, yes, you can. So we're just going to spam that for a minute. And pick locks is at 35. Oh man, the, the, the whole boil and mash him, stick him in a stew. Like, I don't know if you remember, but in the early 2000s, there was a remix of it to the like this EDM track. And like, it's the only thing I hear now. It, it has ruined me for life. Um... So we're going to work on our lockpick in just a tad more. And, okay, good. We're at 40 now. So, there's a neat little trick in this game. Once you reach 40 uh, lockpicking skill, you can click the lockpick on yourself. You delic delicately insert the lockpick into your left nostril. Success! Your nose is now open. Um, it actually increases your lockpick skill. Um, if your skill is below 40, um, you will die. Yeah, yeah, Clavis. Uh, it, it actually increases your skill to pick your nose with your lockpick. It, it's a hilarious little joke that the Coles put in. It is most hilarious. Um, and, uh... Yeah, unlock your nose. Uh, so, uh, thank you for coming, Clavis. Uh, it's been a pleasure having you here. Please, please feel free to come back uh, at a later time. I, I hope you have a good evening. So, we're going to just pick the uh, lock a few more times. I know we're getting really tired here. We're down to three stamina, so... Great, <laughs> will do. All right, we're down to zero stamina. We're gonna have a nice rest. Um, 
and you can do it a few times in a row if you're really exhausted. I think you can do it two times in a row. Yeah, there we go. Mid-afternoon, and... Okay, we're going to do a few more lockpicks because I'd like to be around 60 lockpicking skill. Uh, with the toolkit, that will be more than enough to do all the thieving without an issue. What are we up to? 58. Uh, a couple more. There we go. 60. I'm satisfied with that. And we are at mid-afternoon. Um, yeah, we'll give it a try. So I'm going to go and... Uh, we're going to do another side quest here. Excuse me. Um, let's go ahead and sneak, actually, because I don't feel like fighting monsters right now. And I think we've got enough time to, to at least make ourselves even more tired. Um at this point. Yep, here we go. Okay. So these lovely plants have uh, that seed, which they just spit. Um, they spit spit the seed to each other. There's a couple of ways to solve this. Um, you can either throw, the rock, uh, throw a rock at it and try to knock the seed out of the air. Uh, that's technically, I think, the thieves one. You can also, like, hang out above one of them and try to grab it. But since we're going to work on our magic, we're going to use our fetch spell. You lose concentration and the spell fades. You'll have to practice some more. So, uh, a couple of things about the spells. If you look at the spells, it tells you the name of the spell our expertise, so the spell gets stronger the more you practice it, and just how much man mana it costs to cast the spell. Um, open is two, flame dart is five, and fetch is also five. Um, we're just going to keep practicing. Come on, mana. And, like, it, it takes a good many, many times to get it to work. We're already out of mana, um, because we only had, like, 14 points, and uh, since it takes five per cast. Um, yeah, our, our magic is garbage right now, so we're just going to have to wait. Sunset approaches anyway, so let's head back to town. Um... Sneaky, 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 sneaky. And I'm sure he's like looking at us, the centaur is looking at us and like, what the fuck is his problem? Why is he sneaking by so like, obviously? And what's our skill at now? Um, all right, it's going up. I'm going to do a rest right here because... Um, all right. Yeah, I, I want some higher stamina before we uh, do some thieving at night. So I think... Yeah, the night is still young on day one. So if you notice... Uh, it's starting to get dark and, and, and it takes a while for the, the screen to turn dark. It doesn't just do it instantly. It, it's going to slowly fade and you can start to see the palette change now. Um, in later games, they actually do a better job with the palette shift and you get like a proper golden hour kind of sunset. But in this one, they were still kind of learning how to do... Um, 
palette shifting. It, it was a really new tech back in the day, and so it, it was uh, not as sophisticated as it gets in the later games. Um, hang on, I'm curious. Uh, oh, this is Autumn of 92. Okay, so... Oh, no, no, sorry. That's 3 is Autumn of 92. Uh, okay, 90 slash 92. Okay. So, so yeah, this would, would have been released in 92. There we go. Now it's really becoming apparent that it's getting dark out. Let's go ahead and head on over to the Thieves Guild because I really need that lockpick set. Um, and we're going to ignore that coin because they only let you off once. If you, you do that again, they will rob you proper. And I don't feel like being robbed. Um... All right, Boris. Let's go buy some stuff from Boris. The toolkit. There you are. All right, so we now have a proper lock picking kit. So there's two places to hit up. We've got the old lady's house and the sheriff's. Um. Fireforge, do you have a preference to which I hit first? We're going to hit them both tonight, but but uh, which one do you think I should do first? Thiepen. And I know that's not how you spell it, but... So how's our skills doing? Stealth is up to 71. Uh, all right, well, let's do the old lady's house first. It honestly makes no difference. It's it's six of one, half dozen the other. Uh, so let's go ahead and get our toolkit out and lock pick the door. You hear a snick. The lock is open. The smell of lavender and dust fills your nose as you walk in. This reminds you of a great aunt's house you once visited. There's a covered birdcage near the stairs and a knitting basket besides the couch. And a kitty. Um, let's, let's go say hi to the kitty. Uh, you pet the nice kitty. We even get a point for it. The cat really likes being petted. This is a very insistent cat. Um, okay. Let's go ahead and do some lookies about. Oh yeah, don't worry, I petted the pussy. You find three silvers that have gotten caught in the cracks. Uh, that was for me searching the, the couch. Um, let's check her, her purse. In the purse, you find 20 silvers and some soiled hankies. You take the silver. What about the knitting basket? A string of pearls seems to have fallen into the bag amongst the knitting. You take the pearls, of course. The knitting, you can do without. Ooh, let's grab those candlesticks. You take the silver candlesticks and stow them in your pack. What's in the drawer here? You find a single silver in one of the desk drawers. You find nothing else of any value to you. What's in the chest? The chest is filled with old quilts, doilies, and sweaters, five sizes too large for anyone to wear. You really don't want any of them, so you close the chest again. And because it is clearly um, a sprite, we're going to open the bird's nest. Chirp, chirp. You hear a voice from upstairs saying, Kitty? You better not be bothering the nice little birdie again. Who would think a little birdie could be so noisy? You quickly cover the cage and hope the bird shuts up. Um, 
we're gonna save and I wanna do that again. You've already done that. All right, let's see. Let's pet the pussy again. Uh, all right. There is a way to do something else with the cat. I just don't remember how. Um, maybe it's... Uh, this little house cat seems harmless, but strangely restless. Let's talk to it. You get no response. Then what is it that you do? Let, let's try the knife on it. Despite your intentions, you feel a calmness and a sense of peace descend upon you as you even consider thoughts of violence. So, oh, oh, hang on. Creek. Creek. Yeah, all right, let's not do that. Um, I could have sworn there was something else to do with the cat. I just don't remember how. All right, well, that's good enough for now. Let's go ahead and head on over to the sheriff's house. Uh, oh, okay. It, it's just glitching and thinks I want to throw the dagger when I don't. What the hell? It, 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 man, it's just glitching right here. Okay. Let's take our lovely thieves kit and unlock the door to the sheriff's house. You hear a snick. The lock is open. The people who own this house must have some money. Everything looks new, and there's not a speck of dust visible. All right, hang on, just need a bit more tea. All right, that's the last of the tea. The room smells vaguely of sauerkraut and bratwurst, with just a faint odor of smoke from pine wood. From somewhere in the house, you can hear someone snoring. So basically, the, the, the key thing to remember when thieving in this game is don't use stairs and just just yoink and, and get all the things you can. You place the candelabra carefully in your pack beneath your cape. In the desk drawers is an assortment of mostly worthless objects, but you also find three silvers, which you take. Ooh, there's a cute box here. Let's grab it. Gently and stealthily, you lift the lid on the little box. As the little music box begins to play, you hear the sheriff yell out, Otto, stop playing with that music box and go to bed! Boy, did you make a mistake. Otto, even in his sleepy state, winds the music box and closes the lid before he heads back to bed. Phew, that was close. The goon must have been so dumb, or sleepy, or both, that he didn't even see you standing there. You quickly toss the box into your pack. You take the vase carefully from the mantle and place it gently on the floor. Uh, let's go ahead and pull the painting. By lifting the painting, you can see what certainly must be a safe hidden in the wall. Uh, come on, there we go. There's no point in trying to use one of the, come on, surely it does. Fine, then just, okay. Ah, got it. You see a bag of coins. You find 50 silvers and add them to your collection. You then put back the empty bag in the safe. And let's go ahead and close up behind us. Since you've already robbed the safe, you close the door, narrowly missing your fingers in the process. And put the painting back. You carefully lower the painting into its original position. And the only thing left to snick is the vase. You place the vase carefully in your pack beneath your cape. All right, let's get out of here. Okay, we have now successfully done all of the thieving we can in the game.
Um, but there's still other thief things to do. Let's go back to the Thieves Guild. Uh, one of the primary things is we can actually play a game with the Chief Thief. Uh, oh, let's talk, talk to him. His name... I'm known as the Chief. Uh, the Thieves Guild. Where else but here can one mingle freely with others of our chosen profession, sharing tips and secrets? Where else can you safely fence stolen items? Where else can you ask questions like, like these and not be thrown in jail? The guild is truly your home away from home. Um, let's see. The tips. Don't get caught. Secrets? That'd be telling. Crusher. Crusher's our personal manager. Fence. Just give your stolen items to Boris and you'll be duly compensated, recompensated. Or in terms more suited to your apparent intellect, you get cash for your loot. Boris. Boris is our accountant. Accountant. I have no time for idle talk. Why don't you do something constructive like stealing? Auto, uh, stealing Otto's yo-yo. Um, let's see. Scabs. Those who do not pay their union dues are the lowest form of life. Um, let's see. Town. There are a few places around town where a clever and skilled thief can make some silver. Perhaps even you could steal something. The sheriff. The sheriff provides a useful service in this town. He arrests anyone too stupid to be a good thief. Otto. He is the sheriff's goon. Um, tools. We'll gladly sell you for a modest fee, a lockpick. However, for the true professional, we have a thief tool kit, which will allow you to pick anything with a little practice. Just talk to Boris. Oh, we're getting tired. So when it says we're getting tired, it means it's getting late and we need to head back. But let's sell a few things first. The candlesticks first. Let me see. Let's see now. Deducting the guild cut and allowing for resale markup that comes to 100 silvers. Here you are. And the vase. Let's see now. Deducting the guild cut and allowing for resale markup that comes to 40 silvers. Here you are. Uh, the candle abra. Let's see now. Blah blah blah. It comes to 150 silvers. Here you are. The pearl necklace. This is the mother load. Let's see now. It's 500 silvers. And the music box. Let's see now. 90 silver. Okay. Um, I think that's everything, isn't it? Yeah, that's, that's all the things that we filched. Um, let's go ahead and get out of here. All right, into the inn, as it were. All right, Shamin. Uh, oh, actually, let, let's see if we can get a meal this late. You take a seat. All right, let's buy some food. Oh, we're not hungry. Okay, then never mind. Let's buy a night's rest. So the f food consumption is a bit weird in this game. Um, sometimes you need it, sometimes you don't. I believe you automatically eat your rations if, if you're hungry enough. Because, um, yeah, I'm actually not seeing our rations. So we must have consumed them. Um, in which case, we're going to go buy some more because it's very useful to have some. Uh, 
All right, let's see here. Buy ourselves a meal. Nope. Okay, we're not hungry. Okay, so out of curiosity, how much gold do we have now that we've sold a, sh a bunch of shit? 93 gold. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and go to the dry goods store, and we're going to buy us some rations. Um, actually, I'm curious. Uh, how much does that weigh again? 2.7 pounds. Okay. Okay, let's buy us some food. Oh, crap. We are carrying so much that we can hardly move. We need to drop something. Um, we're right at our weight limit. Oh, shit. That's a, I didn't realize that was 20 rations. So it must give you 10 each. I didn't realize that. Shit. Okay, that's why... Um, in that case, what we're going to do is we're just going to go get rid of our apples as quickly as we can. Um, let's see here. Uh, how quickly is it? It's not draining our stamina yet. That's good. Um, let's actually do another quick thing. There's a fun Easter egg. Let's do the Easter egg first. Um, it's on this screen, I believe. But let's just follow the path a bit further, and we'll come back to that in a minute. Okay, so this is where we started off. It appears that a recent avalanche has sealed off the road leading out of the valley. There seems to be a fox north of the road. Help me, brave and kind hero. You can kill the fox if you want to, but it's better to help him. You spring the trap. In exchange for your kindness, I'll give you some advice and a bit of information. First of all, it sometimes pays off to be polite, even to rude people. As for the amusing tidbit, Baba Yaga put an enchantment on the Baron's daughter some years back. To break the spell, you need to talk to the Dryad. Au revoir. Ta-ta for now. Be seeing you. All right. And for the Easter egg, I think it's the that screen. Let, let's try it. I think I need to sneak. Or maybe it's... Is it the next one? or It's been a while since I've triggered it. That was weird. The pathing went crazy there. Oh, here we go. Oh, you pick up a few small rocks. Never mind. That's not the right one. Let's drop the rocks because we're already at capacity. Jeez, how many did I pick up? There we go. And we're still at 50. Well, I'll try and trigger the Easter egg later. I'm not, I don't remember what I'm missing. But I'm missing something. All right, anyway, the apples we can get rid of over this way. Far from the frost field fares forth this fighter. Hunger has hurled me hither from home. My name, it is known in the Northlands as Braugi. Bar barter with blades clash, or bargain with me. All right, Braugi. Braugi I be, to boast of my boldness, strong as the storm that seeds forth the snow. Fiercer in fighting than foes in their fury, fear now this frost giant, fighter and flee. Uh, Northlands. Far from the frost field fares forth this fighter. Hunger has hurled me hither from home. Uh, it's the same thing he said earlier. Okay, uh, bargain. 
Find me some fruit for to mellow my mead horn. Gift I will give of a gem that now glows. Jewel from the Jotunheim, flare of the frost flame. Fetch to me fruit that will fill up my fists. It looks like those will take a lot of fruit to fill up those fists. So remember how we bought like five things of apples and there's like 50? If we take the apples and give them to him, you're no longer overloaded. That's a load off your mind. Fruit you have found to fill all my food stores. Thus filled the bargain, my gem you have bought. Brogi has bartered and all has been answered. The mead in my mellow and now I head home. Brogi strides off through the cave on his way back to his northern home. And we now have a shiny bright gem. And a lot less weight. I've forgotten how heavy those apples were. Uh, which is actually really good if we do decide to get more mushrooms, but I think with the, what is it, 98 gold, 93 gold we have, we're good for now. Um, come on, keep going, there we go. Um, yeah, l let's, let's go head on over to those plants again and look to maybe get that seed because we need that seed for something so if you notice there's some bushes to the left um that's where the castle would be so we can't go that way there is kind of a logic um to the these woods I, I, it, it, it loops around various things. There's a loop around the town and a loop around the castle. Die! Come on, Gabo. Die already. All right. Ten silver coins. Just what we need. More money. All right, we're getting there. Our, our weapon use is going up. It's not much still, but it's better than it was. So we're going to sneak again um, just for now because uh, we're, we're still not very strong. <clears throat> oh, there's a brigand. Yeah, let, let, let's avoid him right now. All right, so we're back here. Let's go ahead and use fetch. Charge up fetch. And it dissipates. We gotta practice some more. It's our, it's, our expertise is only up to eight, so it's gotta be up to I think about twenty before it will actually uh, catch it, unless we get really lucky. Because, like I said, just the the increased skill just increases the probability of it working. noticed when we started casting the spells we only had 15 as a max mana and we now have 19 so as you can see practicing really really helps in this game um we're gonna rest for a bit i think we can you know, just the once should probably do it close enough let's cast again So I know we're just past the um, two-hour mark. We're going to keep going for a little bit. 
Um, it's a Friday night. I don't have work tomorrow, so we're, we're just going to keep playing for a bit. Um, though it looks like that's about the limit for resting right now. It is an annoying feature of this game that you can only rest so much because there's time. There are times when you want the time to pass quickly. Okay, so there's a brigand coming. You know what? Let, let's give it a shot. The worst we're going to do is die, um, but I might be able to kill him if I'm lucky. Sometimes you can. Other times he just is too hard. No, we might do this. All right, we got him. Eleven silver. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, I think it's safe that we can start not sneaking. Oh, Gabo. Um, all right, so let's go ahead north here, because this leads us to my favorite place, and most people's favorite place in this game, Irana's Peace. The meadow lies covered with a blanket of flowers. Unusual for this early in the spring, it's warm, even though surrounded by the late snows of winter. A large carved stone lies flat on the ground. You feel as though someone gentle was watching over you. You feel that you're safe here. So this is uh, Irana's piece. We can come here at any time, and there's never monsters here. And if we rest, it doesn't matter how far down, or if we sleep here, I should say, doesn't matter how far injured we are or how far down our stama, stamina or mana is, it'll recharge us to full. And we can eat the fruit. The sweet, juicy fruit of the tree is amazingly satisfying and refreshing. So, um, one of the, the things I love about this game is, is this place. But um, the, the fruit of the tree is just something that, that's kind of always intrigued me. And I kind of, if you go to like, Trader Joe's, if you've got one around you, they have these lovely little fruit jellies, which are kind of these fruity jellies that are covered in sugar. And that's kind of what I imagine they taste like. They probably don't, but eh, that's kind of what I think. Um, so let's go ahead and save again. What time are we at? We are at mid-morning. Um... Let's grab some flowers, because the healer said she would take some. As you pick up a variety of the sweet-smelling flowers, they seem to glow in your hands. You put them safely away. And you take another handful of the lovely, fragrant, fragrant flowers. You have all the flowers you need. So, you can only grab two at a time, but the healer will always buy them from you. Um... But, um, yeah, it, it's not glitched like the mushrooms. Uh, so the stone here, let's take a look at the stone. The large stone appears to be ancient and deliberately placed. Marks covered into the, carved into the stone almost look like writing. Um, the stone is the words, Irana's Peace, carved upon the top. There's some runes carved along the side. Um... Let's go ahead and cast open. Oh, there's something inside. The scroll vanishes, even as you read the magical runes upon it. You now have the, call it, the knowledge to cast a calm spell. 
Sorry, I, I just need a snack right now. Um, all right, we're good to leave. Um, we'll come back there later. So to the right of here is um, an ogre, and we're not facing that yet. We're not strong enough. It will kill us. So instead, we're going to do some exploring. Oh, a saurus. Let's go for it. Hostile intent is evident. You prepare for battle. Oh, crap. Ow. Ow. Bastard. There we go. So the problem with Saurus is they're great for leveling up, but you search your opponent. What a waste. No treasure. So, yeah, they, they never have treasure. And shit, we're down to two stamina. That's bad. Um, we're going to rest here. Uh, if there is a monster that you've killed on the screen, it is safe to rest. If there's not, you, you can try to rest, but sometimes a monster might attack you. Oh, another brigand. We're not doing, dealing with you right now, bitch. We're going back here. Um, any of the general forest scenes are the only places you can get attacked. If they're a unique screen like this one, uh, you're completely safe. The only exception, I think, is the goblin camp. Excuse me. So, also, as much as I do love voice acting for these games, I am looking forward to the fourth game. Because they got... They did a CD version that's fully voiced, and they got John Reese davies to do the narrator. And there's kind of a, an infamous story of him. When he agreed to do it, he didn't realize how many lines there were. And... He, he was said some very uh, discouraging words about uh, the length of the script. Yes, exactly, Gimli. Uh, so, yeah, no, it, it's going to be a treat when we get to four. Um, and four is considered the best of the series. It, it is their, their masterpiece. Um, and you'll see why. It's actually the only quest for glory I've never beaten uh, due to bugs, but because we're running this in Scum VM and th there have been a few fan patches, I should not have the issues I did when I tried to play 20 years ago. All right. Um, what time is it? Mid afternoon. Um, let's do some sneakies. I'm just trying to figure out where where should we head to next. Um, so technically, I could do Baba Yaga. But, honestly, I would rather hold off on her until we're a bit stronger, just because um, we'll have to be out in the forest at night, and that can be really dangerous. Uh, excuse me, especially when it comes to um, some of the monsters we'll encounter. So, we'll wait a few days. Um... Ah, let's go to the Meeps. That, that's an idea. Uh,
All right, there's the goblin stronghold up. Oh, they're much more aggressive this time. Come on, I don't want to fight them right now. Uh, let's keep going. Here we go. You hear squeaky muttering from beneath the ground. It seems the meeps are having quite a discussion about you. Hiya, hiya. Pleased to meet ya. Uh, so the meeps are, are a Quest for Glory mascot, basically. In fact, when the Coles did Hero You, they actually managed to get a bunch of meeps, like plush meeps, manufactured. And I actually have one um, somewhere tucked away. Um, unfortunately, it's not green. They, they did them blue, but it's still very cute, and, and I love the thing. So, meeps. We are a happy meeps living in our happy holes. Don't worry. Be happy. Rocks. We use rocks for doors. They keep us dry and warm in our holes. Coals. We like live in tunnels under the ground, you know. Fur. Hey, like fur is good stuff. Keeps us warm. Mine's the best. It's like green, you know. Green fur. Oh, you want some green fur? I think I have some somewhere. Ugh. Brigands. Gee, boss, I really don't know much about that at all. Hey, sorry. What about magic? I found a scroll lying around in the woods one day. You want it? It's yours. Um, I think that's everything that, that they can provide. So let's grab our scroll. You pick up the scroll, and we now know detect magic. Sweet. And the fur. Let's grab the fur. You pick up the green fur. And let's check on some things. It's mid-afternoon still, and... Okay, our stealth's gone up to 90. Wow, that's pretty good. Um, there's still a few more places we can go. Though I think we're going to end it soon, because Deary is kind of beginning to get a bit restless. A monster just wandered by. You hid in the bu bushes and avoided it. All right, we're back at the mushroom circle. Ooh, a white stag. The beautiful white stag is foraging for food. You seem to have startled the white stag. So you can actually attack the stag, um, but we don't want to right now. Otherwise, it'll cause problems. You follow the stag into this forest corner. You feel as though the eyes of the forest are watching you. You watch the stag, fascinated with his grace and beauty. There's something special about this place. Oh god, a tree woman. The tree woman speaks. I am the dryad, keeper of the woods. Are you one with the woods? Yeah. Then you shall aid me, and I shall aid you in your quest. Bring me a seed from the spore-spitting spirea of the north, that I may plant it elsewhere in order to preserve these rare and magical plants. Thus will you become a true friend of the forest. Okay, so we got to get that seed that we were trying to get anyway. So with that, um, I think we're going to call it a night here because Deary is getting impatient. Um, and we've been going at this for a while and my voice is beginning to give a bit. But I wanted to thank you for coming and joining me. I do hope to stream more later this weekend, perhaps. We'll, we'll see how things go. But uh, thank you, Flint, for joining me. And uh, 
thank you all else for, for hopefully watching in the future. And uh, see you soon. Hacksaw out. <laughs>